What is going on, traders? It is your market engineer. We are back in a quick one. Everyone's wondering what's the plan, what's going on with Hylion, and so we are back in another. We're going to quickly go over some news that's been coming out, some catalysts we have coming up next week. We're going to go over some resistance points that I've plotted and some different numbers and levels I'm looking for them to break through in the next couple days here or tomorrow. Keep an eye on the indexes, man. Keep an eye on the VIX. You know, look, we had volatility kind of ramping up. Then we had the gap up with the president. That whole announcement, all these things gapping down, everyone gapped down. The good news is that we're moving in here a little bit. We This is another important level that we broke through right here. So this is going on right now. We'll see if this holds tomorrow through in the market. But keep an eye on these levels, the, the 336 and uh, the 3300, the 3300 is another really important one. Anyways, indexes are looking good. Last we heard, the president, he said he was doing all right. I'll try to throw something up on screen now about that. This is interesting. This actually just came out when I was recording this. You know, he's doing better. He could leave as soon as Monday. And he's taking steroids for that normally you would see in serious cases. This is just them, you know, trying to kill an ant with a cannonball, essentially. It's the president. He's got a campaign to run for and all that. So, I mean, they're, uh, they're, they're going super aggressive. It's the president. You, you have to. So anyways, this article goes on to basically say the doctor said he's continuing to get better every day, although he's had he's had some serious symptoms, but he's avoided, you know, kind of going into exactly what he meant by that. They do talk about his oxygen levels dropping, you know, a couple percentages, which I don't know, is that just like shortness of breath? That doesn't sound too serious, right? I mean, Wall Street certainly doesn't seem to think so because this thing is just chugging away, breaking that resistance point right here. But see, this is here's the time. It broke this at 8 o'clock, so that was like a couple hours after this broke. Hmm, interesting. Anyways, back to Hylion. So the first catalyst I'm excited for is he's going to be at the New York Stock Exchange tomorrow morning, ringing the opening bell in a kind of ceremony deal. Likely going to be media coverage there. Plenty of articles on that coming out, so just further media hype, getting pumped, just metadata getting put out. We have an interview with Fox News or Fox Business at 3 p.m. tomorrow Eastern, so check that out. That should be really good for us, get some uh, mainstream media coverage. And then you just look all over the place, man. I, I kept finding article after article on lots of these big pages. Ben Zing is talking about it. You know, maybe not the best things, but, you know, they're talking about it. Barron's is talking about it. Read this article. It's awesome, but we're not going to go into that right now. He's throwing shade at Nicola, so... Um, Lots of big moves, lots of stuff coming up. Really excited. Let's just hope the president is okay and we can get October started off right finally. Now, let's talk about some stuff and things. So we looked at some uh, resistance points in the last video, looked at some rejection bands, some rejection wicks. So I drew this little wedge here. This is one of the past resistance levels we've had. Let me zoom out a little bit. So I like this level right here because this wick basically shows that the price tried to drop all the way down here but you had a tremendous amount of buy pressure pushing the wick up and having the the session close at that price up there instead of down here so a lot of buy pressure right there a lot of support there and then if you look back even further you see kind of at the beginning of our run this is a point where we saw a lot of wicking as well almost touched over here this one broke through it actually here but you see it, the next candle actually turned green and then it had that giant wick as well, which that absolutely gorgeous. It would be better if this was really small. Like that's the best. If it's just no wick on the top, little baby green box, and then a giant wick up, that's a shooting star. Like the inverse is a hammer. So you see like a, a huge wick down. Like if that little box is at the bottom right there, that would be really bad because that would mean the price opened there and it closed all the way down there. So yeah, hammer is bad. Shooting star is good. But anyways, so we got a lot of wicking here, a lot of support as well. There, there. Lots of wicking here. So some of these are pretty good. They validated themselves out a number of times. See, it kind of got out. This wedge, this wedge was really aggressive. You have to like understand, depending on when you're drawing your trend lines, you know, if you're in a kind of normal time when this thing is just moving and going through the motions, then trend lines are a lot more reliable. But when you have these huge spikes in volatility, whoop, hang on. 
Yeah, like look, look in here, all these, all the volatility is spiking. So, you know, when volatility is ramping up and down and stuff like that, you can have all these crazy moves, which makes it a lot harder to plot these and have them hold true or maybe as true. But it's still worth plotting. You know, it gives you a general idea of, you know, are we kind of moving in the right direction? You know, maybe it, it breaks through it a little bit, but it's still semi-valid. So keep that in mind. We had this huge drop, the, the gap down and everything, you know, some of the worst news we've gotten in a while. So just understand that some of these wedges are pretty aggressive because it's pricing in that volatility that we're seeing and it's just going to cause them to be not as accurate as they would be under normal circumstances. Now all that said, I still like these a lot. It gives me some references, some waypoints moving forward. It's not the end of the world if this thing breaks out of it a little bit and starts going kind of sideways, you know, as long as it's kind of moving up. But I would get the warm fuzzies. We keep riding this line and touching it occasionally, and then we break through this wedge right here to the upside. That would be a great sign of strength in my eyes, and I would be really excited. And of course, as always, you know, hit the thing, do the stuff, follow me on the stuff. I'm not a financial advisor. This isn't financial advice. I'm just your guy. And I will catch you in the next one.